Hello, this is Wander001, and this is my review of the Netgear N300 wireless router, aka the WNR2000V2. I'll start by saying that this is my current Wi Fi router. I've had it for about a year and a half now. It is not what I would consider a bottom of the barrel Wi Fi router. It has a few more features than your basic Wi-Fi router, but it's by no means the top dog in its class. Uh, you pretty much are going to do your basic streaming of uh, movies and playing games and what have you on this, but we'll get into that later. Uh, we'll start with the specifications. I'll give you the side view here. Uh, it is 7 inches wide by 5.1 inches tall and is 1.4 inches in depth and weighs less than a pound. So you're looking at 0 0.088 pounds. It is constructed of really general plastic material. Here you can see on the side you have the shinier plastic which does collect fingerprints rather easily. The front, top, bottom, and back are made of this more matte plastic material. It, it The build quality on it is solid for a plastic piece of construction. Uh, it does come with a stand, which I have because I like having the Wi-Fi router stand in this upright position. It can be also put on its side. Uh, it just depends on how your setup is. Uh, I'll run down some of the specs really quick. It is a 802.11 ABGN and 2.4 gigahertz standard Wi-Fi band router. Uh, so what that's going to do is that's going to allow uh, your newer end devices, wireless end devices, and also your older, maybe you have some computers that you haven't quite updated yet, to all run on the same Wi-Fi network. It is compatible with Windows 7 Vista XP 2000 Mac OS Unix and Linux for those of you out there who are so inclined. I will also throw in some of the other spec these aren't as important to most people but and you could look them up but I'll just ramble down them really quick. Uh, you've got your protected Wi-Fi access WPA, WAP, WPA2, SPK and WEP uh, it's got double firewall, SPI, and NAT firewall. Uh, it's got protection against denial of service, or DD, DOS attack provisions, as they call it. And it also has expanded host DMZ for secure gaming. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you to the back here and figure out which way i got to flip this thing to show you. Uh, so, on the back of the device, you have your power cord, you've got your on off switch, you've got your one WAN port, which is your wide area network. This is going to be directly from your cable modem into this device so it can actually transmit the Wi-Fi signal. Here you have four LAN ports. Uh, these are your local area network stuff. So if you have a game console, uh, set-top streaming box like a uh, Apple TV, uh, Google TV if you have one, or like a Roku device. You plug them in here, you'll get faster speeds than if you just use the Wi-Fi. Uh, right there you can see the factory reset button and there is the Wi-Fi on-off switch. Now the Wi-Fi on-off switch I like uh, mainly because what it'll do is it'll take your network name from being searchable and it, it will turn off the Wi-Fi signal. So in a sense it actually saves you a little power. Uh, however, the device itself doesn't actually use a lot of power. Uh, it has what Netgear is calling a Energy Star compliant uh, power adapter. Uh, couldn't really find out what that meant entirely, but uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to roll in. I have a, a kilowatt meter. I'll show you how much it is uh, idling and how much it was uh, streaming a movie so you can see the, the kilowatt usage. Here I'm using a kilowatt meter to show you that the idling of this particular device is just 4.7 watts. 
while it's transmitting if I turn off the Wi-Fi transmitter you'll notice that it does drop a little bit so if you want to save a little power when you're not using the device you can turn off the Wi-Fi transmitter and I'll turn it back on so you see once the transmitter turns back on you're back up to using 4.7 kilowatts an hour instead of the 3.8 Currently, I am streaming a Netflix movie that's HD to my laptop. So you can see it is bouncing back and forth between high 4.8, 4.9 kilowatts per hour to uh, peaking around 5, 5.3, 5.5 there. So this Wi-Fi router, like I said, isn't the bottom of the barrel, but it's not the, the top dog. Uh, they say that it goes up to 300 megabits per second. Now, you're gonna to have to keep in mind that the 300 megabits per second is, is their baseline readout. Uh, you or I, unless we have really, really good internet connections, are never gonna see that kind of speed. Uh, so realistically, it can go up to 300 megabits per second, but you're probably never gonna see those type of speeds. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you uh, using speedtest.net uh, what I was getting broadband speed directly from my modem to the computer and then I'll show you from the Wi-Fi router to the computer what kind of speeds I was getting. Again, it all depends on your carrier and uh, how many people you have around you. Here we're testing the Wi-Fi speed at uh, speedtest.net. What you cannot see is a ping rate of 2.5 milliseconds. So we have a download speed of 19.48 megabits per second. Uh, just keep in mind that depending on how many people are currently on your cable connection, the speeds can vary. So we have a download speed of 19.48 and an upload of 2.10 megabits per second. All right, so with the speed tests out of the way, you, you can get an idea of what you're gonna be looking at with this particular device. Uh, right now, this I use this as my go-to device. Uh, it wasn't, when I first got it, I wasn't exactly thrilled with it. Uh, there were issues with drops. Uh, my Wi-Fi connection was dropping. And I found out that was due in part to, there is a feature that you can get through the dashboard where it looks around at the other Wi-Fi's and figures out other Wi-Fi's in your area and figures out what channel they're on. And if they're on the same channel as this, it will jump to a different channel to try and increase your speed. Now, because I live in a apartment complex and everybody and their mother has Wi-Fi, it was constantly jumping from channel to channel. And in between those channel jumps, if you're just stationary on a page reading email, you won't notice the drop and then the reconnect. But if you're streaming a video or on YouTube right now, uh, you would notice a drop off. And then it was a good 20, 30 seconds before it reconnected. Uh, and once I turn that off, I haven't had any problems with the, uh, the router here. Like I said, I've had it for a year and a half. And that first two to three weeks that I had it, it was really ticking me off because I couldn't figure out why it kept dropping the signal. Uh, Cause I came from a, a Linksys router before. But once I turned that off, I was perfectly happy. The range on this particular device isn't terrible either. I figure I might as well start with Vanna whiting it or something instead of just leaving it stationary. Um, it, it's not meant for really, really large houses. They have uh, other routers that are better suited for that. They have a uh, better range. Uh, my place is about 1,200 square feet. And the furthest point from the router would be in my bedroom. That's like through three walls and a hallway. And the electrical box with all its wires are kind of there. And uh, I'll, I'll throw up a range test. Here I'm using Merkai Wi-Fi Stumbler. Probably said that wrong, but I'll link to it in the description uh, to show you how my Wi-Fi signal strength is I am at the furthest point that I can get through in my house. Uh, several walls and a couple doors to go through and an electrical box to go past. And uh, I wish I could show you more. I wish I could show you the SSID for my, my network, but uh, I didn't want to have the 
MAC address in uh, the video here. So what you can see is I'm using 802.11n. I'm currently sitting on channel 1. I have 99% signal strength using Netgear and it'll tell you what your personal security settings are. In the channels here, this is what I was referring to about uh, if you have multiple Wi-Fi routers in a development on the same channel, it would hop around to try and get you to a non-busy uh, channel. So what I did was I just ended up telling it to, to stick with channel 1. Down here you can see there's actually somebody else using channel 1 and they're within a reasonable range. Uh, but I've kind of monitored the uh, the Wi-Fi traffic in my development for a while and determined that channel 1 was the least busy at uh, at most times. So I, I mean as you could see it's not it's not suffering that much even in my my little place. I can actually walk outside and you know go a good 50 feet outside of my my house and still be able to pick up my signal. So what I'll do now is I will plug this in so you can get an idea of what the front faceplate looks like here. I know I neglected this in the uh, earlier description when I was going around the views here. Uh, this is a secure network. If you have a, a Netgear device or a Netgear attachment, you could push this and it will securely uh, let that device enter the wireless network without having to put in uh, the pin or know the uh, SSID for the network. Here you can also, you can't really see them, uh, there are numbers one through four which indicate the, uh, the LAN connections as well as up here there is a you know power icon and a, you know I'll, I'll just stop here, I'll plug it in so you can see all the, the pretty lights. Uh, they're not too bright so as long as you don't have this right next to you you'll be okay. I mean, if it's sitting out in your living room, uh, if it's in your bedroom, it might be a little bright, but it depends on your, your sensitivity to those kind of things. All right. Uh, you'll have to excuse the lighting for, uh, the, the lighting by my, my setup here is really bad. And my tripod also doesn't reach up that high. So I'm kind of freestyling it with, uh, my hand here. Uh, so going down the front here, you have LED indicator lights, and that blinking red light is from the camera, so don't worry about that. Up here, you have your power indicator. Uh, when you first turn it on, that will be orange. When it goes to green, you'll know that uh, you have power. Here you have the network connectivity indicator. So again, orange, you're not connected. Green, you're good to go. Blue, you have your Wi-Fi transmitting signal. Uh, if that is off, you do not have your Wi-Fi transmitter turned on and people will not be able to see your network name and you'll save just that much more power. Uh, here you can't kind of see them one through four. These are your local area network connections. Here you can see four is lit because I have currently the PS3 connected to that. Uh, and here is what the secure network lock for Netgear looks like. If you push that you connect uh, to one of their devices. Last but not least I want to show you the the, the user interface uh, that you can get into and tweak some of the options. Uh, it's got nifty things like parental controls, uh, bandwidth metering, so let's say your particular ISP uh, limits how much usage you can have. Uh, there are options in there that you can change to uh, say, okay, at this level I want you to start flashing a light so I know I'm getting close to my cap. Or you can also say at this level, just turn off the Wi-Fi pair, like no access anymore. Uh, it also has provisions for IPv6, if you know what that is and are concerned about it. Uh, it'll IPv6 compliant. Here we have the web interface with the user interface for the, the wireless router. Uh, currently I am on the wireless settings area only because I don't want to have the basic settings because there's some sensitive material there. Uh, on this page you can see you can have your wireless router's name whether you want to broadcast that name or not. The channel that you're currently on uh, as I stated before if you're on the auto and it's jumping between channels you will probably have a dropped connection uh, as well as the mode so this is the speed at which you can uh, quote unquote go up to. Uh, I get nowhere near 300 megabytes per second, but I just put it there because I, I wanted the WEPA 2 uh, 
security options. Down here you can also have a password for your wireless router if you don't have an open Wi-Fi and you password protected you would put your password in here. Likewise for the guest network you have the separate network name and a separate network password as well as security options. Uh, you can also decide whether you want to broadcast it or even if you want to uh, enable the, the network connection. If you don't have anybody utilizing it, it's uh, worthwhile to actually turn that option off so you don't have as many Wi-Fi channels in, uh, in your area. Uh, like I said, I live in an apartment complex, so there are a lot of Wi-Fi signals out there, so one less Wi-Fi signal uh, kind of helps with the speed. Also, you can allow the guest network to access your local area network. You don't have to do that. You can just uh, segregate it so that they can only go on the internet and not uh, log into any of the attached devices. There are uh, content filtering options. I'm not going to get into that because I really don't use that. Here you have the maintenance area, which is just that. Uh, it's chock full of sensitive information that I'm not going to put into a video. So you have the status, attached devices. Attached devices is nice. Uh, it'll show you device names and the MAC address for the individual devices. If you have a open Wi-Fi network, this will allow you to uh, differentiate any of the items that are, are logging onto your network. And if you choose to have an open network and want to keep it that way, but there's a device in particular that is causing trouble, you can actually use the MAC address that is displayed to block just that particular device. Um, <clears throat> advanced wireless settings, I'm really not going to get into a lot of this stuff. I just want to show you uh, provisions for IPv6 here, as well as traffic metering. Uh, traffic metering is actually uh, pretty good. Uh, what it does is it will tell you how much bandwidth you are using. If you have a ISP that has limitations on the amount of bandwidth that you're allowed to use. This is a very good option to keep track of. Uh, it's done in megabytes. So here you can see as of today, I have upload of 77 megs, download of 1.4 gigs, giving me a total of 1.5 gigs. Uh, it'll also break it down over here as you can see today, yesterday, this week, this month, and last month. The, the month ones are, are fairly interesting in my opinion. Uh, here you can see last month I had uh, used 60 gigs. That's mainly because I was streaming a lot of internet video and, and had some uh, friends over that we were gaming. So this month so far I've only used 7 gigs. Again, it, streaming video will eat up a lot of your bandwidth. So if you have concerns about that, you can have turn on flashing lights on the Wi-Fi router to indicate that you're approaching your bandwidth cap that you can put here, preferably before the cap. And then there's an option, once you reach the cap, you can disconnect your ability to actually access the internet. Uh, it's a little harsh, but uh, some ISPs do charge exorbitant amounts if you go over your allotted gigabytes for the month. Um, that's pretty much it with the web UI. If you have any questions, feel free, you can put them in the comments. Last but not least, the pricing. Now, this is my go-to device when people ask me what Wi-Fi router they should get, mainly because it's cheap. It's a little better than the bottom barrel one, which is extremely cheap, uh, so I figured they'll get a little more use out of this one. Uh, you fall into two camps right now. Uh, you can walk into like a Best Buy and get it for like 64 bucks, or if you can get it online, which is the catch, if you don't have Wi-Fi, unless you're plugging directly into your landline, you won't be able to get it online. But if you get it online, Amazon has it for like $44. Uh, like I said, it, it ticked me off when I first got it because I couldn't figure out why it was dropping. But uh, now that I got that situated, I haven't had any real problems with it. Uh, some people say they have to reboot this, uh, the Wi-Fi router on a daily basis or every couple of weeks. Uh, I personally can't comment on that only because I turn the Wi-Fi and the modem off every night. Eh, whether it's good or bad for the device, couldn't say for sure. I haven't had any problems with it and it gets powered down every night before I go to bed and turn back on when I get up. Just to save that that little bit of, uh, of money. Uh, okay, so this has been Wanderer001 and uh, the Netgear N300 aka 
WNR 2000 V2. And uh, if you're in the market for a new router, I would suggest giving this one a look.